Two minutes and 45 seconds left. The booster tank is being pressurized for flight. That optimizes the flow of fuel and helps add structural support to the rocket. Does the crew get uh, notices that these things as they are checked off, or do you are you aware of them? There's uh, definitely communication that's constantly going in between the, the vehicle and the launch team, letting them know as they achieve all of these different milestones. And what differs now from the simulator is you start to hear a lot of the mechanical processes as uh, fueling uh, and pressurizations are uh, being completed, umbilicals and various parts of the, the launch gantry being pulled away. And this is different than being in the simulator and a reminder that this is the real thing. And that is really exciting. One and a half minutes to go now. Ground propellant feed has uh, been terminated at this point. Still on schedule for launch at 6.12 a.m. Central Time. Just one minute to go now. So we use now on internal power in preparation for its flight to the space station. Everything is nominal on board, ready for launch. Team aboard. And 40 seconds away. That's the first umbilical tower separating from the booster. Should have auto sequence start, start now. Twenty seconds and counting. The uh, ground umbilical to the third stage has been disconnected. And there's the second umbilical tower now separating. We are ten seconds Ignition, ten seconds from oxygen. launch. Five, four, three, two, one. See the engines igniting there. And lift off. So we use MS. 08 carrying, uh, MS-09 carrying Serena Anand Chancellor, Sergei Prokopiev, and Alexander Gers to the International Space Station for a, a six-month stay to uh, Everything is not complete uh, research on board the space station. 20 seconds. Good no, help no. us here on the Earth as well as in space. We're fine. Thirty seconds. <laughs> Beautiful. Everything is nominal. Still getting good views of the Soyuz as it pulls away from the launch pad in Baikonur. Everything's and launch took place at 6.12 a.m. Central Time, right on schedule. Everything going seconds. according to plan so far as the Soyuz uh, delivers 930,000 pounds of thrust from its four, four boosters and single engine. The first stage of the Soyuz measures 68 feet in length and 24 feet in diameter, burning liquid fuel for the first Pitch two minutes and six seconds of flight. Roll. Everything's nominal. And now uh, one minute and 12 seconds and counting into the flight. Velocity is about uh, 1,100 miles per hour. Systems are nominal. Crew are good. Still getting great views of the Soyuz. Now one minute and uh, 45 seconds into today's flight. One minute and 56 seconds. The escape tower has jettisoned to this point. And right at the end of the Everything video there, you could see those strap-on boosters, uh, the first stage coming away um, and uh, tumbling away from the vehicle. Uh, absolutely beautiful. They drop away to an altitude of 28 statute miles. 
So he's traveling now at about uh, 3,300 miles per hour. Great view of the crew inside the cabin. You can see Alexander Gersk at the, stop of the, at the top of the screen and uh, Sergei Prokopiev in the, at the bottom. Now two minutes and 38 seconds. Launch shroud should be jettisoned now and the rocket's altitude is uh, 48 miles above the Earth. And that's a time that I had annotated on a little sticky note, uh, also annotated in my flight procedures. That's a view of the, uh, the first time you have an opportunity to look outside your window and see a view from Earth, uh, a view from space. And we're get, actually getting a new view here. This is some new external rocket cameras uh, that uh, are going to be replacing some of the in-cabin views that we normally get, looking down as the uh, Soyuz continues to make its ascent into, into orbit. Altai, 100 kilometers. Everything performing as expected. Everything Fourth stage of the Soyuz project. is 56 feet in length, 13 and a half feet in diameter, with a single engine with four fuel chambers providing uh, 178,000 and 222,601 pounds of thrust for its three Two minutes ten. and 28 Parameters seconds of operation. Nine. Stage will continue to burn uh, until the four minute and 43 second mark. So he use, uses what's called a hot stage technique. The third stage will ignite while the second is still burning. That's why the Soyuz has an open area in between the second and third stages. Everything is stable. How fast does this go by for the crew inside the, inside the capsule? This goes really quickly. And uh, during this time, you're feeling the constant onset of G-forces getting up to um, even up to three and a half, four Gs at uh, some points. It's pretty comfortable, though. Um, you're sneaking peeks out of the window every, every once in a while. That number. first view of the arc of uh, um, the Earth's horizon with the blues and, and whites of the clouds is uh, just breathtaking. Everything continuing to work nominally as the rocket continues to make its ascent. Everything's nominal, correct, good, copy. And uh, four minutes and 44 seconds into the flight, the third, third stage is now igniting and the second stage will be shutting down. And the core booster also separating at an altitude of 105 miles above the Earth. Second stage separation. Yeah, second stage separation has been confirmed. Everything's We're actually seeing some of those uh, panels falling away as that second stage separates. And so at this point, Soyuz is being propelled by a single engine, the Soyuz third stage. That provides uh, 67,000 pounds of thrust and will burn for four minutes and two seconds. So it's amazing to feel, the, again, the vibration of those engines pushing you um, into orbit. Uh, one of the things that really surprised me was the direct, or I'm sorry, these very discrete corrections as the as the rocket begins to pitch over and gain horizontal velocity. And it felt like just these very discrete bursts from uh, directional um, rockets. That it was like ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk. It wasn't a, like this just smooth arc, but uh, with these very discrete impulses to actually push you over into this horizontal um, pitch. And, and uh, so just a really, really cool experience. And that's not something you uh, you get to, to kind of feel beforehand or, or expect. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so even during our simulations, as we simulate a launch, uh, you really, you don't, of course, get to experience the G-forces or what the engines are going to feel like. Just uh, about uh, six minutes and 20 seconds into the launch, everything continuing to go nominally. Inside the Soyuz again, we've got uh, Serena Anand Chancellor from NASA, Alexander Gerst from Third ESA, stage, uh, and Sergei Prokopiev all good. making their way to the International Systems Space Station over the next two days. Crew are great. And this is a unique view. It's neat to, to actually have a, uh, this perspective um, to see how the engine's performing here and to see that second stage fall stable. away and see the Earth below. Yeah, we usually see the Earth from a little bit higher from the International Space Station. That's right. Seven minutes now in today's flight. 420 seconds. All continuing to go well. Pitch your rotation nominal. Crew feeling good. Yeah. 
440. Everything's stable. Seven minutes and 30 seconds now into the day's fly. The velocity is for the Soyuz now almost 13,500 miles an hour. Once the third stage delivers Soyuz to orbit, the, and the module is separated, a series of pre-programmed commands will be executed to prepare the Soyuz for orbital operations. Those stored commands are called time tag commands and allow many of the Soyuz systems to be automatically Everything's activated by onboard computers at precise times stored in those computers. And right now the crew is just uh, enjoying the ride, um, but they're monitoring very uh, closely how the vehicle is performing um, and just monitoring systems as they're approaching uh, third stage cutoff. Everything is stable. 490 seconds. 500 seconds. Eight and a half minutes now into the flight. Good. Everything continuing to go well. I like this external view, but I also I kind of miss uh, getting to see the crew yeah. uh, on the inside. Agree. 520. Okay, eight minutes and 52 seconds now into the flight. Third stage cutoff has occurred, and there is a separation. That's the single separation. liquid fueled engine now shut down and dropped away at an altitude of 126 statute miles. It's performing Outside. an avoidance maneuver by Handing opening a valve in its Moscow. liquid oxygen tank. Dima is here. That was awesome. And we have confirmation. Confirmation now that uh, everything deployed as uh, as as uh, expected okay, with the antennas Moscow, and solar arrays. Uh, that we saw the uh, spacecraft separate and the capsule and crew now safely in orbit. Altai's so he's Moscow. orbiting an altitude of 143 miles by 118 miles, and that orbit will be raised systematically Moscow over the course Altai of the next one. two days to get it into a uh, place to clear. rendezvous with the International Space Station. So that means that they're, they're in space, right.